Joining us for a conversation is Dr. Roger Moss, the CEO of Labrador Gold. Dr. Moss, thank you for joining us today, sir. Thank you, Maurice. It's great to be back to update your listeners with, with, what, I, with what I think is um, another, another nice release. <laughs> Absolutely. And it is a great time to be speaking with you as Labrador Gold has just announced its highest grade mineralization coming from the big vein, along with updates on the Golden Glove and Midway targets on the 100% owned Kingsway project. Before we begin, Dr. Moss, please introduce us to Labrador Gold and the opportunity the company presents to shareholders. Yeah, sure. I think um, you know many of your listeners will already be quite familiar with the story, but for those that are new to it, uh, Labrador Gold is a uh, is a junior gold exploration company focused uh, in eastern Canada and uh, in what in what we think are, are very good jurisdictions. Um, we have a project in Ontario, uh, one in New Brunswick, one in Labrador, and one in Newfoundland, which is the which is the flagship Kingsway property, and that's one that we picked up about two years ago, and we've been working consistently uh, there ever since. And I think, in terms in terms of the opportunity, what we see here, we we actually picked that property up after Newfound Gold had announced their discovery um, immediately to the south of what's now our Kingsway project, and um, we were fortunate to be able to get there early on and uh, and pick up that property as it turns out uh, that the kingsway property has a 12 kilometer strike length of the appleton fault zone which um as many of your listeners may know is where newfound gold has been finding a lot of their gold mineralization along that fault zone and um we have as well in the last few years we've we've drilled four targets that we developed from scratch and uh, all four of those targets have intersected significant gold mineralization. So um, we're four for four, and um, we still have a lot of that Appleton fault zone to explore. So I think that's really the uh, that's really the value proposition right there. Well, batting one hundred percent, you can't go wrong with that one. <laughs> four for four. <laughs> well, let's get to today's press release. Labrador Gold just announced high grade mineralization from the Big Vein target along the Appleton fault zone. Dr. Moss, take us to the southwest end of the Big Vein and tell us what your team has discovered. Yeah, well, you know, Big Vein, we've been drilling there for, for quite a while now, and um, we've, we've reached the, the southwestern limit of our permit, of our permit uh, towards the end of last year. So we, we had applied for another permit, and that came in about, uh, about a month, month or two ago. So that enabled us to start to start drilling to the southwest because the mineralization that we saw at Big Vein was continuing down in that direction. So uh, this this hole is the second the second hole that we've drilled to the southwest. Uh, the first one, which we announced a few weeks ago, in, intersected intersected 54 grams a ton over just under a meter, and uh, which which was significant. But this hole just announced is uh is even better and this is the one that i i said in the news release is the highest grade that we've seen from kingsway to date and that was 284 grams a ton over just over half a meter with another intersection just below that of 15 grams a ton over just over a meter so um and and the interesting thing about this particular hole is that it's 120 meters to the southwest of that last hole I mentioned with the 54 gram interval. So that's a big step out. It's not something that we have done at Big Vein um, to date. We usually are uh, more cautious in stepping out in smaller, smaller increments. But uh, that step out and to get a to get a, an intersection like this, I think is is really significant, and it just shows that um, you know Big Vein. And the the Apple and Falls in in this area is is just really prolific, and um, I'm I'm quite sure that we're going to see a lot more um, as we step out to the southwest, and also as we infill that 120 meters between this hole and the last one. Well, 
allow me to be the first to say <clears throat> congratulations. What are the next steps on the big vein and when can we expect more news flow? Well, I mean, we're continuing to drill. Um, we have two drills at Big Vein right now, and uh, one of them will continue to test this southwestern end of, of Big Vein, um, both stepping out and drilling drilling deeper under these intersections that we've already outlined. And the second drill currently is on what's what we call the HTC zone, which is the high grade, steeply plunging zone that we identified up near the up near the uh, the, the discovery outcrop, um, and that is that's probably about 300 350 meters from these holes that we have right here. So um, yeah, two two drills drilling, and um, we'll put out put out the the news as we get these results in. Moving further southwest, let's visit the Golden Glove target where there have also been high grade gold intercepts released. What can you share with us, sir? Well, Golden Glove is obviously uh, uh, an interesting target because it's on the east side of the Appalachian Fault Zone. And that's where newfound gold have had a lot of their success and some of their stellar intercepts, or well, most of their stellar intercepts have come from the east side of the Appalachian Fault. So um, certainly some people believe that that, uh, that side of the fault has, has better, better potential for these uh, longer intervals of high grade mineralization. Um, we've had success at, at Big Bain, but um, certainly not, not those long intercepts that we see from, from, uh, from Newfound Gold. So the, the idea is that perhaps at Golden Glove, um, we can we can tap into some of those longer inter intercepts of high grade gold mineralization. Um, the the hole that we just announced is 20, 20 grams over a meter. So we we have we have the grade, but we're still looking for those longer intercept intercepts. Um, we did get uh, a little bit longer intercept in a in a previous hole that we announced from Golden Glove, and that was uh, six point two grams over over four meters. That included 10, just over 10 grams of over two meters. So um, there's something happening there. Uh, it's really early days at Golden Glove right now. So uh, it'll take us a bit of time to get a handle on the structure down there and 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 what we're how how it all fits together. One thing I will add, um, and again, it's the, this this is this is kind of interesting and, and shows the potential here at Golden Glove is that these two holes. Uh, intersected this gold about 100 meters to the southwest of the Golden Glove Discovery outcrop. So again, we have about 100 meters um, between these holes and the Discovery outcrop to target more gold mineralization. Now, the Golden Glove is in close proximity to Newfound Gold's Big Dave. To better appreciate today's news, highlight some of the similarities that you see between the two targets for us. Well, I mean, I, I don't know anything about uh, Big Dave yet. Uh, as far as I'm aware, Newfound has not put out any results from Big Dave. Uh, so don't know what that looks like. But more generally, uh, certainly the mineralization that we see along the Appalachian Fault in Golden Gloves in, uh, at Big Vein and also at our pristine target and the Doyle Zone, that that mineralization style is very similar to what we see at um at newfound gold or at least in what they what they show in their in their public disclosure so um you know we're, we're seeing uh gold hosted in quartz veins often those uh those quartz veins are buggy they, they so they have pits in them uh they include the often stylolites which are pressure pressure solutions with some of the rock has been dissolved away and of course there's often um visible gold like pinpricks of visible gold throughout these these veins and and we see that certainly in the in the hole from big vein that we that we just announced uh, there was a lot of uh, a lot of uh, gold grains scattered throughout those uh, those intercepts and um, the other thing is that the the country rock is very similar. Black shales, um, gray shales, siltstones, and 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 gray wackies, so coarser sediments. So 
overall, the package that we see along the Appling Fault um, is very similar to what uh, we know of at, um, at Newfound's Queensway project. Finally, let's move north to the Midway target where assay results indicated more gold. What can you share with us? Well, Midway, Midway is a different beast. It's, <laughs> uh, it's away from the Appleton Fault Zone. It's further west, probably it's about two kilometers north, northwest of, uh, of Big Bane. And the reason I say it's a, big, uh, a different beast is, is that it's, it's not hosted in quartz veins in, in sedimentary rocks. It's hosted in uh, gabbro, which is a which is a mafic intrusive rock, so we believe that these gabbros have come up structures intruded along these structures, and um, again, the, the, those same structures may have been may have been used by gold mineralization, um, mineralizing fluids coming up and depositing this gold. So, what we see at Midway is disseminated gold in. The gabbro. So what that means is that instead of being concentrated in quartz veins, it's actually more um, throughout throughout the gabbro. It's not concentrated in any small small part of the gabbro, but um, it tends to be uh, spread out over larger intervals. And and certainly the the one that we just announced, uh, 13, 13 meters of two point two grams, it would would attest to that. And um, you know that's. That's kind of a, a pretty nice, pretty nice grade if you're looking at a sort of more bulk tonnage target, which I think if midway turns into anything, that's what it would be. It would be a, you know, a, a lower grade, but potentially bulk tonnage target. And um, that mineralization is very close to surface. It's, it's within 40 meters of, uh, of surface, so easily accessible. Now, before we leave the project site, Dr. Moss, how far along is Labrador Gold into their 100,000 meter drill program? Uh, we are about um, 40, 45,000 meters into the program, so just under halfway. Switching gears, let's look at some numbers. Dr. Moss, please provide the capital structure for Labrador Gold. Yeah, we, we, it, it's changed a little bit uh, just recently because we had some warrants exercise. So uh, right now we have about a 169 million shares out. The warrants have gone down to just under 20 million remaining. And we have about 7 million options uh, outstanding there. So uh, all in all about 195 million fully, fully diluted. And uh, of course, those warrants brought in a little bit more cash, and so um, so we have about twenty six point five million in cash right now. And Canadian. Just, Canadian. And just for the record, you and I speak offline frequently, but just for our audience members, I have been actively purchasing at these prices. <laughs> yeah, not not new. <laughs> All right. Before we close, Doctor Moss, what would you like to say to shareholders? Yeah, I think, um, you know, uh, time, times are tough right now. Uh, markets certainly aren't cooperating and, and we're not seeing any love for um, even, even what I consider good news like this. But, um, you know, we're, we're, we're not going to change our strategy because of what the market's doing. Um, we've been very successful. As I say, we've, we've generated four targets from scratch. We've drilled all four of them and we've come up with gold on all four of them. Uh, so, so that's something that will continue. Um, it's, it's a testament to both our team on the ground of, uh, of hardworking geologists and prospectors, but I, I think it also shows the, the real potential and, and the prospectivity of this Appleton Fault Zone of which we, we have 12 kilometers to explore. So there are a lot more targets going to be generated and drilled along that uh, that Appleton fault zone. And so, um, yeah, don't give up hope. Just uh, stay tuned. Last question. What did I forget to ask? <laughs> uh, I don't think, I don't think there's much, um, there's much to ask. I think we covered pretty much everything. Um, you know, as I, as I just said, the, the strategy here is, is to carry on despite what the markets, uh, what the markets are doing, and we're very fortunate to be in a position to do that with our with our significant uh, treasury. So uh, 
there shouldn't be too much, too many, too many changes going forward unless something really gets out of whack. Dr. Moss, for someone that wants to learn more about Labrador Gold, please share the contact details. Yeah, so uh, Labrador Gold, we have we have a, a website. Obviously, it's labradorgold.com. Um, my ad, email address is rmoss at labradorgold.com. And we have Twitter account, which um, which is which is pretty active and gets gets a lot of views. So I, I would suggest people look at that. That's at Lab Gold Corp. And then finally, uh, I always have to mention our, our YouTube channel, which uh, also gets a lot of views. Uh, we post a lot of videos, a lot of um, a lot of interviews like this, also some behind the scenes videos, so that people can see what we're doing out in the field. So. Um, there's a lot of content there that uh, that your listeners can can look at. Dr. Moss, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Wishing you and Labrador Gold the absolute best, sir. Thank you very much, Maurice. That was uh, always always good to talk. Mutual, sir. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.